I'm Chris Markle. I'm the Northwest and Western Canada sales rep. Uh, I come into the industry with 29 years of print experience and uh, now I'm having a great time selling 3A products. I'm Simon Philpott. I'm from the United Kingdom. I've been with um, 3A and its previous guys is Alcan and uh, Ali Swiss for nearly 25 years now. And um, yeah, a lot of experience working with the, the substrates that we manufacture. Good deal. Oh, great. Take it away. All right. Hey, Simon, let's start with. Um Let's start with the history of DISPA. Yeah, sure. Um, DISPA, as you may or may not know, is a, 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 a unique and patented product um, manufactured by 3A Composites here in Europe, in, in Germany at the moment. Um, it, it's a product that um, we essentially added to our portfolio of, of rigid sheets recognizing more than anything that there will be a change in the um, material usages within large retailers and things like that as sustainability becomes more and more of a, a, a factor for them. So we, we produce a lot of foam center display boards out of the factory in Osnabrück. Um, over, the, over here we have two strong brands in the name of Kappa and, uh, uh, and, and Fomex both of them, which of course is a paper liner with, um, in this case, polyurethane core. And the problems of, as we know with foam boards is the disposable of them at the end of life. So DISPA has been introduced and invented to give us an alternative rigid sheet that is 100% fiber based and, and paper based. So that's the history, that's, that's the story behind it. And um, yeah, it continues to, to grow successfully. Nice, yes. Yeah. It does for sure. Um, all right, let's get into some of the great qualities on this, uh, like leaf flat qualities. The the, the board. Um, I, I think we do have a. Um, yeah, thank you, thanks, Chris. The, the the core of the material is is part of its unique setup. So you can see here that we have a a, a core that is completely non-directional. So in every direction, it has the same characteristics. Now this gives us some some wonderful resistance to to the normal short grain, long grain problems that you have with most fiber-based boards. Um, so any direction has the same performance characteristics. But also, if you look at that, that core again, you can see that it allows moisture and air to penetrate to the sheet evenly as well. So once it's been stabilized within its, its, its environment, whether that's to be printed or, or when it's in its final destinations within a, a store um, environment, its rigidity and its, its flatness is, is pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, like here in the States, uh, we talked about this earlier this week, you know, we our DISPA's main competition is Convert Board, and it very much like a corrugated as a mm. unidirectional channel through it or the corrugation, and so it doesn't allow air flu flow through every direction. So it makes it a not only a more stable product, but it also makes it a better print surface as well. Yeah, and the printability of the board is, is fantastic. You know, it's a clay coated liner, it's, it's, it's extremely bright white. Um, so with obviously a lot of the, the inks these days being UV water-based, uh, where color of, of the ink is not as strong as perhaps the old days of solvents and screen, um, the board lends itself well to that technology and gives good good print results. It does, it does, absolutely. I've had the pleasure of seeing some of it printed in Portland and amazing results. And one of the things I tell my customers is, you know, cause it's a question I get on color calibration. You know, they may be, oh, I don't want to try a new product cause now I got to color calibrate it. I tell them to use the foam core calibration mm -hmm. because they both have the same white point and the clay coated mm -hmm. paper facers. Yeah, and it gives it a, a, a great advantage and a, a, a great results every time. Um, so the, the applications and usage of the board is, is brilliant. Um, 
perhaps what people don't realize is how easy it is to convert it into a three-dimensional format as well. Mm -hmm. we've, we've spent a lot of time working with um, people like Konsbergs and Zuns with, with the, the, uh, these, these cutting table technologies to come up with solutions, not just in cutting, but also increasing to give 90-degree um, edges and things like that. So three-dimensional applications are now being utilized more and more. Um, we did a very nice application with uh, a large retailer uh, European based, um, but I think already growing their presence in America with Lidl, um, where mm. they wanted um, to introduce the perhaps it's two meter, but let's say six foot distancing um, information, but they wanted it to stand out. So they actually made it into like a three dimensional triangle that fitted over the top of the aisles and, and, and um, uh, uh, sort of um, rows. So that it was obviously very. Um, uh, evident to see and get the message across. Now that was achieved by using a creasing roller. It's a slightly different uh, shape to a normal creasing roller that you would use with a corrugated board because we've got a five layer paper here. So it has to be a little bit slightly wider to, to ensure that we get a very defined and, and sharp edge without any cracking, but it, but it works very well. Nice. Now let me, uh, let me ask you this, Michael, sorry to interrupt here, but I was going to put those uh, those uh, pictures up real quick if you have a you could take, give yeah. me a moment. Sure. Uh, you While you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to ask kind of uh, this le led me into a question for Simon. Now, I know you can do the V cut in the back and use that as the full, yeah. and you've got the scoring wheel. Does one perform better than the other? Aesthetically, when you have the creasing roller, you get a, 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 a more defined 90 degree. So you get a, a almost like an edge. Um, yeah, so you can see here, as opposed to it coming to a, a very sharp point, you get this nice, what I call defined 90 degree edge, which you can only achieve really with the creasing roller. Okay. Okay. And, and the V grew. Uh, I'm talking about, well, once the screen comes back in, I can show that, but that's the, yeah. uh, that right there is the creasing wheel that uh, 3A and Zund work together to create. And there is a part number that we have we can share with whoever wants it so that they can order it. And this is the V groove I was talking yeah. about, you know, cut with uh, 45 allows you to crease and bend it and either way it won't crack whether you do the v-groove or the creasing roller and, it, and it's come down to aesthetics it's whether you want that really um sort of like ball nosy type edge or, or a sharp edge it's it's purely down to the end customer sort of design or what they're looking to achieve sure yeah absolutely uh, when dispa hangs from a ceiling any issues with it bowing or warping <laughs> No, it's, it's obviously, it's a paper-based product. So humidity, moisture is always a factor when you're working with fiber-based materials. Uh, we, we take a very simple approach. If it's flat when it's installed and it starts to bow, it needs some time for it to equalize and, and, and stabilize in, in the change in humidity. Uh, yeah. it, will, it, it will happen, you know, if, it's, if, it, if, it's, if it was flat to begin with, it will return to its flat state. Uh, and that just needs some time to, as I said, to, to establish itself or stabilize itself in the, in the new environment that it sees itself in. Um, in. In the same way, if a printer gets a pallet of material comes in and they open up the wrapping and the boards begin to bow, well, it's likely that it's come from a, a drier environment, a colder environment, for example, than the print shop. Um, we always recommend waiting 24 hours for the boards to stabilize before you, you use them but I think that's pretty much normal for any fiber-based material anyway yeah, yeah yeah exactly and you know the other thing too with the regards to humidity you know that I've noticed uh, here is and especially in the winter even if you're a humid environment everybody's got their heaters on which dries things out therefore it dries out the dispa and that it doesn't warp or anything per se but it makes it harder on blades because now the yeah. paper is a little more uh, almost more like sandpaper so it dulls your blades much faster 
and you've got to change your blades a little more frequently. Yeah, no, totally right. And as I said, always recommendation is just just leave it in your print shop for 24 hours with the wrapping off, and then you you'll find the performance, the speed of conversion, print, etc., will all will increase. Yeah, 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 exactly. And even with printing, I I know you've seen it printed. I have too, and. You know, printing two-sided is no different than printing anything two-sided that I've noticed. No, absolutely correct. You know, it's the usual thing. Um, if anything, you, you gain stability by printing both sides because you, you, you're equalizing the board. But if it doesn't need to have a two-sided print, well, you don't need to do it. But if, you, if you have, it's got a hanging board with two-sized print, no problems whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about one. This is a good one, I think, for distribution and for printers, but storage, best storage practices. It's, it's paper. Um, you, you, your, your big thing to avoid is, is a buildup of or, or excessive humidity, and I mean excessive from both sides of the spectrum, too dry, too wet. You will run into some problems if your, your environment is not pretty good. Um, you know, we have seen pallets stored by doors which are opening and closing all the time and then when the material comes to be used problems occur uh, it's just a little bit of better housekeeping will, will improve the, the performance of the board yeah. is there a shelf life on this one no no shelf life at all no it's this it's stable um the the bonding is a pva adhesive so it's a water-based adhesive but if the environment is is pretty much um controlled then the board is not going to uh, uh fall to bits if you like in six months or anything like that mm -hmm. okay yeah that's awesome that's good to know um sustainability so because it is paper-based, and I don't know if you have blue bins like we do here that indicate yeah. recyclability, but print or no print, throw it right in the blue bin when you're done with it, correct? Yeah, and, and obviously we, we see other so-called um, green polymers in the market, and, and people uh, talk about things like fluty polypropylene has been a product that's easy to recycle. Well, that's all very well and good if you can identify what is polypropylene, what is polyethylene, PVCs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most retail environments still have a bin for plastic and a bin for paper, and paper can be cardboard or, or any fiber-based material. This is very easy to identify. It is an FFC paper-based product or fiber-based product. Just stick it in your blue bin, and then there is no cross-contamination with with other polymers or anything like that. And I don't know what it's like in, in the US, but at this moment in time, pulp has price. So you actually get money for, for selling your, your tonnage of, of paper as opposed to polymer, which often carries a charge because it either gets incinerated or, or dare I say, just ends up in landfill. And that's the problem with polymer-based products. Yeah, 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 exactly. And let's talk about, you brought up FSC certification. What does that mean? Um, FSC has pretty much, um, I, I, I'm a bit of a cynic really because I, th I think they've kind of monopolized the whole um, sort of environment or the, 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 the agenda on, on paper, but essentially it's the chain of custody. It's, it's how and where the paper, the pulp has been sourced, who's converting it, um, people like us who then convert it into uh, another format as in a sheet uh, through the distribution channel all the way through to the printer themselves, this, this chain of custody proves and, and, and assures that the material uh, has come from a farmed source, is being treated and used in the right way, and ultimately then can go back into um, recycling and, and, and start to the degree to cycle again. Obviously, this where we don't utilize recycled products in it. You know, the beauty of the, the, the product is its whiteness and its brightness. And, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, at the moment, that's that's 100% virgin, but completely FFC. Right. Yeah. So, which means the trees we're getting are sustainable. It's a tree farm. We're not you got going it. out yeah. here cutting forests. Yeah. There's no uh, orangutans being losing their trees to make this, but that's for sure. Right. That's good. That's always good to hear. Uh, let's see. So what applications, we had talked earlier this week and you had mentioned that you were using DISPA there in the UK and you were even replacing 
Forex, uh, and for everybody who doesn't know what Forex is, that's equivalent to Centra here in the US um, in some applications. Can you talk about how and when you might use DISPA to replace a PVC or other polymer-based materials? Yeah, I, I think probably like um, maybe in the US as, as well, there's a lot of habit in material usage within the industry. Um, the, the, the foam PVC is commonly referred to over here as, as Foamex, that's F-O-A-M-E-X, that's in the UK, because that was the first brand that hit the UK market. It's, it's our brand, it was um, Forex's um, uh, first name in the UK. And you'll see printers and you'll hear end customers basically say, stick it on a bit of 3 mil Foamex, as in 3 mil foam PVC. Now, a lot of those applications are, are relatively short term it might be campaigns for christmas and things like that in a lot of instances they they, they could be going into a frame uh, or they could just be um, stuck on the wall now dispo will do all of that um, you know the limitations with dispo and we'll, we'll come on to new products shortly but the limitations with dispo is it's 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 an internal board so as long as there's no excessive moisture or water or anything like that going onto the board then then this can be utilized in many many areas where Sintra three mil forex three millimeter can be um can be done okay yeah that's uh that's definitely very helpful um and, and, and one of the the, the 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 things that we always get with a, a polymer based material is expansion and contraction due to the mm -hmm. fact that it's 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 a PVC. So in some instances, this will be a more stable solution than than a foam PVC board, which, as we know, right, uh, moves sort of six millimeters over 100 degrees C. So it has quite a bit of movement on it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and again, to back to what you were saying, PVC is not recyclable. You mm -hmm. know, that's going into the landfill with this. When you're done with it, throw it right in the blue bin. Mm -hmm. uh, something we get asked here in the U.S., and I know this is a, a big U.S. thing, but that's black or color combinations of white, black, black, white, black, white. I know black right now is not an option, but is that potentially a viable option in the future? The, the, the product is evolving. As I said, very shortly, I'll, I'll introduce a couple of new um, members of the DISPA family to, to everybody. But uh, it's the usual thing. If, if there is sufficient demand and if we can find the, the right papers um, from, from, you know, obviously the, the, the paper mills around Europe, then there shouldn't be any um, difference. There shouldn't be any reason why a black, white, black combination couldn't be uh, made available. Okay, yeah, that's good and to know. And I saw a chat pop up about thickness, so I'll, I'll address that. Um, yeah. When we built the line, we built it so that um, five layers was the maximum uh, that we could put together, which gives us the 3.8 millimeters, but it has been built with the intention to go thicker. Um, it's this usual thing. We kind of had to sell what we've got now to be able to turn around to our parent company and say, would you mind spending another million dollars or so forth building in some more stations? But the line has been built with the intention to, to go to seven layers, nine layers, that type of situation, which of course will, will end up as a thicker sheet. Awesome. That's good. good to know. Good to know. And you kind of brought it up. Let's talk about some of the new Dispo line. Yeah, um, we, we, we get strong feedback from the market for the product and like all new products, um, you start off with one and then if it's successful, which, which it has been, we want to add um, to the range and fulfill various areas where one DISPA can't, can't do. So DISPA, as you, as you know, um, is 3.8 millimeters, it's a five layer paper. And that's fantastic for a lot of applications, but we certainly find that there is a number of um, uh, retailers using what we call frames uh, profiles, where a three millimeter board is the maximum they can work with. So we have now uh, a 2.4 millimeter board, which obviously will fit nicely into a three millimeter uh, profile. So instead of being five layers, it's, it's only three layers. So we still have good rigidity and stiffness, of course, it's not as good as the, as the five-layer board when you take out 
two layers, you, you have to uh, lose some of those attributes. But mm -hmm. as I said, if it's going into a frame or into a, a, a profile, then it's perfect for it. So we, we were in the process of just coming out of summer shutdown in Osnabrück. So these boards will start coming into our inventory during the month of September. And, and then, of course, um, as quickly as our, our colleagues in America will start filling a few containers uh, available in the US as well. But, it, but it's a, still a very nice board. It's still a very rigid board and certainly comparable to things like frame sensor display boards. But as I said, more, more akin to going into a, a profile uh, or a frame where a thinner sheet is, is required. Okay. And then one that really gets me very excited is, is what we call Dispar Outdoor. So um, this is a board that is intended um, to be utilized for short-term external campaigns when moisture will be uh, a factor. And that could also be internal as well. So if there's, there's areas within a, a, an interior where you know it's going to be quite wet and quite damp, then the Dispar Outdoor can also be utilized indoor. So you, you can see that the liner is, is a slightly different shade. Um, it's a little bit yellower, but obviously this is part of its, its weathering um, attributes. And the core as well, as you can see, the core is, is, is a, a different liner as well. So this gives us a, a, a different appearance, but of course we're now putting this into a situation where it can be utilized short term externally. So we, we, we have the question, of course, well, how long? But we, we, we don't know what the weather's going to be like. So in our mind, we very much say, oh, look, this is, this is campaign work. You know, you've got um, Labor Day coming up and then you've got um, Thanksgiving and Black Friday and things like that. Where stores or, or restaurants or things like and so forth, where they want to do a short term campaign, um, stick it outside for a week. Uh, or so forth, and I think this for outdoor will, will work very well in that environment. And, and it competes very well then against boards like Fruity Polypropylene, which traditionally gets used for those short term applications. And we discussed earlier on how difficult it is to, to move um, polymer products into the recycling chain. Whereas again, here we have a very nice paper based material that will um, outdoors. Oh, sorry. Um, up a little bit. Yeah. And I'm not 100% sure what H stakes are, I'm afraid. So, like campaign signage and whatnot that you get here with the fluted polypropylene, it's got two wires that go up vertically into the flutes, and the other two on the bottom side get stuck into the ground. That I'm not sure because, of course, you know, we're not running through the flutes on this one, so I would guess not. Um, but I, but obviously samples and, and materials coming across the US, so it'll be a, probably a try and see more than, than for me to make a guess, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just like here in the Pacific Northwest, very similar climate to the UK, very wet. You know, I would, I would probably get a sample myself and put it in my backyard for like a week on a yeah. rainy day just to see, see how it holds up so that way I can talk about it and, in my area correctly. And, and Bob, yes, you're, the question, the answer is yes, it keeps its FSC, it keeps its sustainability, it's part of its story, so we're not introducing something under the, the DISPA name that will not act in the same way as a standard DISPA, so it keeps its credentials. So it's still a, a, a fiber-based product that can go right into the blue bin when it's all done? You've got it, yeah. Awesome, that's great. And isn't there a third one as well? There is, but I haven't got a sample. Um, okay. These are, it hasn't, I think I had one, but I've lost it or it's, it's gone elsewhere. But we also have a disparate canvas. So it's a two-sided paper canvas effect on both sides. So this is for more high-end, uh, more prestigious campaign work, um, like with your stronger brands and things like that, but also for printers who are doing stuff into what we call the sort of online print world where people want a nice picture. Um, ah, my colleague uh, Egon uh, in Belgium, he has a sample. So if it's okay with everybody, he can flick himself on and show a sample. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Give me one second to get his video up and um let him share his screen. Egon, hold on for me for just a moment. 
There you go. Uh, let's see. Should be asking you to start your video. There he is. <laughs> we'll give you some volume too. There you go. <laughs> Pull it a little closer to your uh, camera there, Egon. There you go. It's quite difficult to pick up the, the effect, but it, it looks canvas. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I it's can, not uh, one of the easiest spot. ones to show. Give me a second. Let's spotlight this video here for a second. It needs to be, it needs to be cross lit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's and cool. Again, this can be routed and folded to, to reduce a picture box, uh, essentially. So, you know, a frame picture. And uh, we've shown it to a couple of um, online print companies in the UK, and they're quite excited about it and waiting for some materials to do some trials, and most likely will add it to their portfolio of substrates on their, on their online portals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that looks really good. It looks similar to the foam core canvas product that we have here. All right, I think um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, samples, we've got some, I think they're seven by seven samples. They've got a V groove in the back. Um, these can be ordered uh, from our website or talk to your, your local rep um, or distribution. The other thing too that I was asked to bring up is the fact that we do have in cartons and it's 20 sheets for a four by eight carton and 13 sheets for a five by ten um, part of the reason for the how little the quantity is is because of the weight this it is a very heavy yeah. product yeah awesome well we have a couple more minutes I figure we can uh, field a few questions I want to uh, we had a, quite a list going on on the side here. Um, let's see if there's anything we didn't cover. Uh, I believe you spoke to uh, Bob's question about outdoor discs being recyclable. Yes. Okay, yeah, so, but it is recyclable. Fantastic. Um, there was a question about the projected square foot cost differential from Centra. That would probably be better answered by your uh, sales rep so if you yes. could get in touch with them and uh, that one can be discussed on a one-on-one -on -one basis because there's a lot you know there's there's a lot of factors involved with that um, <laughs> as far as quantity how much you want all those fun things so we want to make sure that we're giving you an accurate number on that and there was a question from Corey he said might the thicker sizes when might the thicker sizes come out it's, as I said, we had to convince Schweiter to, to, to spend more money. Um, and the only way we can do that is, is having good results with the, the current disparate range, which is now four boards. Um, I think, you know, our organization, we, we, we never miss an opportunity to, to grow and, and, and to sell more. Um, so if we can do a good job on, on these products, then it can be accelerated quite quickly. But the, the line's built, it's, it's available to, to make more, uh, uh, to make it thicker. It's just the investments in putting in the new, um, uh, the new lines um, that sort of roll the material and, and create the creasing. It's, mm. it's big bucks, basically. Yeah, understandable. Sure. I just saw Tony. I just saw Tony's uh, question come up about the Zoom part number. Tony, I'll shoot you an email with that. Perfect. If I'm not a mistaken, I think it's C305. Um, don't quote me on that, but I was just looking at it a minute ago. Um, but yeah, just look for that email from Chris. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Uh, we're right at our time. All right. There we go. Oh, we got one. Is it recommended for standalone displays? Uh, I assume that's something we probably can kind of call, call uh, floor standing display units. Mm -hmm. So where it's been three-dimensionally uh, formed into um, a shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had some, some small success on, again, on, on higher brand value products. 
So corrugated, of course, is, is significantly cheaper than, than DISPA. So for a tin of beans, you probably wouldn't use DISPA. But if you have a nice application for, for Christmas or something like that, cosmetic or, or whatever, where you want the, the FSDU to, 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 to be part of the story, then DISPA is great. And, and obviously with the, the V-grooving and the um, um, tracing roller, it's, it's perfectly feasible to, to engineer it. Yeah. With, uh, with doing that, what about if you were to put some shelves so you could put product on the shelves, what would you have to do? Double or triple up the shelf to hold a little weight? Again, it's application specific, you know, depending on what you're putting on there. Um, of course, if you're putting something like, uh, I don't know, um, bottles of wine or something like that, you, you probably wouldn't use the, 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 the disc for the shelving. You might just use it as the outside and things like that because the limitations of the product is, is there. But um, yeah, we, we can work with you. We've got engineers uh, over in, in Europe that can, can advise. Um, if not, quite often it's do it yourself and, and see how you get on. Well, oh, okay, good to know. And it looks like um, somebody else had a question, which is a pretty easy one. Can you drag knife it? You can. Absolutely. If you're doing a contour cut, my recommendation is using a oscillating or a vibrating knife. Mm -hmm. So that way you get a clean cut. So, and it can be die cut as well. Yeah, yeah. The angulatine, of course, when you're applying pressure, you, you might get a little bit of a bevel on the edge, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of a pillow effect because you've got the five layers, but there's no reason why it can't be converted that way as well. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, gentlemen, we are at time. I want to say thank you to everyone for, number one, your patience and us getting started today, but a special thank you to Simon for uh, joining us and, and, and spending part of his evening with us. Uh, and uh, any final remarks before we before we close out, Simon? No, no, just great to, to see everybody, and and hopefully everybody's safe and staying safe during these very strange times. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, Chris, you as well. Yeah, pretty much uh, what Simon said. I'm glad everybody made it. I'm glad Simon was able to uh, jump on with us on this, with, especially with a big time difference. And hopefully now he can uh, relax and enjoy his evening and hope everybody stays safe. Wear your mask. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thank you. And if there's any other information on DISPA that you'd like to have, if you could avail yourself to uh, our website, which is uh, 3 compositesusacom and just go under graphic display and you'll see the products listed under products. Uh, click on DISPA and um, there's a wealth of information there. And then also for some short videos on uh, a few different things about DISPA, you can go to our YouTube page, uh, just youtube.com and then search 3A Composites Americas. And you can see the previous videos to this one, this video will be up soon. And then there's a section uh, all about DISPA as well. It has about four or five really quick commercial link videos that you can avail yourself to as well. Uh, other than that, please contact us with any questions that you may have, your, your uh, sales uh, manager, or uh, shoot an email my way or your, your customer service rep, and we'll be happy to field questions and get more information to you about DISPA or any product for that matter. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.